Okay, so we're going to solve this problem where we're given a functional equation and we need to find the period of the function f which satisfies this functional equation. So what does this mean? Well, if you think about a periodic function, for example sine, we know that the sine function is periodic because sine x is always equal to sine of x plus 2 pi. So you would say here that the period would be equal to 2 pi for the sine function. And more generally, if we've got a function where fx is equal to f of x plus n for all values of x, then you would say that the period is n here. And we'd need n to be as small as possible. So you wouldn't say, for example, that sine x has period 4 pi or 6 pi, even though that does technically work. You'd go for the smallest possible value here for this to work. So we'll come to that at the very end. So how would we go about solving this? It is actually possible to solve this using recurrence relations, but we're going to go about this in a way that we don't need to use any advanced techniques or quote any theorems, just using this functional equation working directly with this. And a strategy we could do to get started here is actually just try substituting in some different values in place of x to extract some different relationships between f of x and fx plus 1, fx minus 1, and so on. So here you can see we've got x, x plus 1, x minus 1, which suggests that maybe the period is going to be an integer. So we could try now just substituting in, instead of having x, let's replace x by x plus 1. So on the left hand side we're going to get f of x plus 1, and then on the right hand side we've still got this square root of 2 minus root 3, but now replacing x by x plus 1, we've got x plus 1 plus 1, so we've got f of x plus 2 here, and f of x minus 1 just goes down to f of x. And we can do the same thing replacing x by x minus 1. So then on the right hand side we've got f of x plus 1. If we're replacing x by x minus 1 this goes down to f of x, and the second term becomes f of x minus 2. So now we've got two different equations, and we've got f of x plus 1 here, f of x minus 1 here. But then we could combine these, you can imagine adding them together and multiplying by this square root, and then we would actually get back to f of x, and then this would give us some information linking f of x to f of x plus 2 and f of x minus 2. So if we label these as, we'll call this one a and call this one b, what we're effectively doing here is taking both sides of this equation, adding them together and multiplying by this square root expression. So we're doing the square root of 2 minus root 3 times equation a plus equation b on both sides. So this is going to give us, on the left hand side, the reason we're multiplying by this is we've got now the square root of 2 minus root 3 times f of x plus 1 plus f of x minus 1. So this just gives us the right hand side here. So we know now that we're just going to get f of x on its own on the left hand side. So the left hand side then is just f of x, and on the right hand side we're multiplying by this square root and adding everything together, and when we multiply the square roots together, that's nice, we get rid of this nested root now, so we've just got 2 minus root 3 as our factor there. And we're going to have the same factor for each equation there when we add everything together. So then we have a f of x plus 2, an f of x, another f of x, so let's write all this out, f of x plus 2 plus 2 lots of f of x, and finally plus f of x minus 2, all in brackets, being multiplied now by the square root of this thing, multiplied by itself, so we've got rid of that outer square root there. And then you can see we've got 2 minus root 3 times 2 f of x, so we could take that over onto the left hand side, so we've got one lot of f of x, take away two lots of 2 minus root 3, so this is going to give us negative 3 plus 2 root 3 times f of x, let's write this out, negative 3 plus 2 root 3 times f of x, then this is equal to on the right hand side, we've just got rid of our f of x terms, took those over onto the left. So on the right hand side we've just got 2 minus root 3 times f of x plus 2 plus f of x minus 2. So now we can do the same thing again here, where we can replace x by, we could try replacing this by x plus 2, and also by x minus 2, and we can see where that leads us now. So now we've got these written out, but for this second row we've just replaced x by x plus 2, so you can see x plus 2 goes up to x plus 4, and x minus 2 goes up to x, and similarly for the bottom row we're replacing x by x minus 2, so x plus 2 goes down to x, and x minus 2 goes all the way down to x minus 4. 
And again, you can see we've got f of x plus 2 plus f of x minus 2 here. So if we were to add together the two equations, on the left-hand side we would get this, but we'd also need to have this factor of 2 minus root 3. So if we label these equations, again we can call them a and b. So if we multiply equation a and equation b by 2 minus root 3, and then effectively add the two equations together, we're going to get something nice on the left-hand side. So if we write this out, we've got 2 minus root 3 times, we've still got this factor as well, so we've got the minus 3 plus 2 root 3 in brackets. Then we've also got multiplying by 2 minus root 3, and then we also have f of x plus 2 and f of x minus 2 added together. So this is our left-hand side when we do this. So we can just write here left-hand side equals this. But then you can see here that we've got 2 minus root 3, f of x plus 2, f of x minus 2 in brackets. So all of this here is actually just equal to minus 3 plus 2 root 3 times f of x. So then we're going to get a slightly nicer to work with. We've got another minus 3 plus 2 root 3 in brackets there. So we've got this all squared multiplied by f of x. And now we can work out what the right-hand side is here as well. So on the right-hand side, we're multiplying, remember, by 2 minus root 3. So for both of these, we're just going to get a 2 minus root 3 all squared term. And then we're also adding everything together. So we've got f of x plus 4 plus f of x plus another f of x. Let's write this out. f of x plus 4 plus 2 lots of f of x plus f of x minus 4 from the final term there. So this is our new equation now that we've added these together and multiplied. And at this point, we've got both of these square root expressions all squared. So let's actually expand the brackets here. So we have negative 3 squared gives us a 9, negative 3 times 2 times another 2 gives us minus 12 root 3, and then finally 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12, so we get plus 12. So this gives us 21 minus 12 root 3 is equal to this term here, all being squared. And this term, the 2 minus root 3 all squared, we get 4 minus 4 root 3 plus 3, so this gives us 7 minus 4 root 3. And if you compare these two, you actually see something really interesting here. The left-hand side is just equal to 3 times the constant on the right-hand side, so we've got 3, and then in brackets, 7 minus 4 root 3. And this is being multiplied on both sides by everything, so we could at this point actually just take this 7 minus 4 root 3 term and divide through by that on both sides. This is going to give us a much nicer equation to work with now, because if we think this is effectively just 3 now that we've divided by this, and here this is just the number 1 now that we've divided by 7 minus 4 root 3. So we get on the left-hand side, this simplifies quite substantially to 3 times f of x is equal to, there's just the number 1 here, so this is just f of x plus 4 plus 2 times f of x plus f of x minus 4. And then again, we can subtract 2fx on both sides, and then we're just going to get, on the left-hand side, f of x, and on the right-hand side, we've got f of x plus 4 plus f of x minus 4. So now we've got a much nicer looking equation to work with. And from here, just like before, we could now replace x by x plus 4. So we'd get on the left-hand side, f of x plus 4, and on the right-hand side, this goes to f of x plus 8 plus f of x. And you'll see here we've got two lots of f of x, and we've also got two lots of f of x plus 4. And we're going to be able to make these cancel out. So if we write out from the top equation, let's just write f of x minus 4 is equal to f of x minus f of x plus 4. Then we know that f of x plus 4 is equal to f x plus 8 plus f x. So we've got f of x minus f of x plus 8, and also minus this f of x. And then you see the f of x is cancel, and we're just left with f x minus 4 is equal to the negative of f of x plus 8. And then again, if we replace x now by x plus 4, we'll get on the left-hand side f of x, and on the right-hand side we get the negative of f of x plus 12. We're just adding 4 to both of these x values. So this is really cool now. You can see f of x is the negative of f of x plus 12. So if we go all the way up to f of x plus 24, let's write this out, so f of x plus 12 would be equal to the negative of f of x 
plus 24. And then we can conclude f of x is equal to the negative of f of x plus 12. And f of x plus 12 is the negative of f of x plus 24. So this is going to be now the negative of that gives us positive f of x plus 24. So we've got f of x is always equal to f of x plus 24. And therefore we see that the period is 24. But at this point, we're not technically done because we've shown that while this function does repeat every 24 units, it could have a smaller period than this. For example, if it repeated every 12, then it would also be true that it repeats every 24. So we need to rule out actually all the possible factors of 24 now. So if it was to repeat every 12, then we would have f of x would be equal to f of x plus 12 for all values of x. We've seen that f of x plus 12 is just the negative of f of x. So this would be equal to negative f of x. So we've got fx is equal to negative fx. And therefore, if this is true for all values of x, we just have f of x is equal to 0 for all values of x. So this isn't particularly interesting. You just get a trivial solution if it was to repeat every 12, where the period wouldn't be 12 there. It would just repeat for all values of x. So this rules out 12 as our possible period, and it actually rules out all the other factors of 12 as well by a similar argument, because if it was 1 periodic, or 2, 3, 4, or 6, or 12 periodic, then, for example, if it repeats every 3 values, it would also be true that it repeats every 12 values. So all of these cases are now ruled out if you want a non-trivial solution. So the only other factor of 24 left to consider is 8, then. So if we had the f of x repeated every 8, we would again have fx equals f of x plus 8 for all values of x. But you can see here we've got f of x plus 8 involved in this equation. So if we replace f of x plus 8 by fx here, we'd get on the left hand side we're taking fx plus 4, and on the right hand side now we've got fx plus 8 plus fx, so this is just equal to two lots of f of x. But then from here, we could replace x by x plus 4 again to get an f of x plus 8. So just replacing the x here and here by x plus 4, we've now got f of x plus 8 is equal to 2 times f of x plus 4. But then we've just seen that f of x plus 4 is 2 times f of x. So 2 times 2 times f of x gives us 4 times f of x. And this is equal to f of x plus 8. And the whole point of this example here is we're looking to see if the function could be 8 periodic. So f of x is equal to f of x plus 8. So we'd then have 4 times f of x, because that's equal to f of x plus 8. This would also have to be equal to f of x. And this only works, this is only going to be true if f of x is equal to 0. So again, we're in this trivial case then if we've got an 8 periodic function. So this is also ruled out then. So if you want to have a non-trivial solution to this problem, it has to be 24 periodic. And if you want to actually find an example then to show that there is a non-trivial solution with period 24, I'll include a link in the description, but you can solve this almost like a recurrence relation using some techniques from that. So then you can actually find what the solutions are to the original functional equation.